Let's get sideways. Yeah. Was get, I? Don't get sideways. Don't get sideways. Don't hide away. All right, while David's posing down, welcome to the post-game wrap-up. I'm here with David and Peter. Of course, we just finished up here in Tampa. Hidetada, the winner here tonight, and this was a hard-fought battle. He was pushed all the way, Peter, but you can see he was generally overjoyed to get this win and qualify for the big Olympia coming up. Yeah, it was very difficult to judge. You know, Ward on his own, head-to-toe, had more going on. Hedy had more size, and you wonder about, David touched on this earlier, you know, coming down to the 212 is he just a bit too lean now you know it is but we'll see i mean you know he did a tremendous posing routine it was very difficult to judge i would have given it to ward to be honest but uh, no complaints you know it was it was a toss up and that's always good. I mean, you know, we, we talk about competitions. Usually it's, you know, uh, more often than not, it's a runaway or it's kind of a one-two punch. This one was clearly up for grabs out of the uh, prejudging, as we talked about after the prejudging wrap. Uh, Marvin Ward giving him all he could, but at the end of the day, I think he did just a little bit too much muscle. Yeah, I'll agree with Peter 100%. When you see Marvin by himself, you really can't pick apart his physique at all. Maybe he's a little bit long torso. That's it. He's very aesthetic, proportionate. His conditioning was on. And, and like I said before in videos, I think a lot of guys you know, take for granted that there is still a lot of height variance in the 212 division, and that's where Marvin falls short. When you see pictures of Marvin next no pun intended. No. When you see pictures of him next to Hiditata, you see the size difference between him and Hiditata. It was nice to see him really get work tonight at the night show. You know, we talked about that in Sacramento. Same thing here, except with Steve Weinberger as your head judge. They brought the guys out, did the comparison rounds. Worked them pretty hard in the comparison round. Sometimes if it's a if sure. it's a set thing, the comparison round is more for show for the crowd. He really worked them in the comparison rounds, got through all the guys, brought the top three back out, really worked them again, flip-flopped them around. So it was, you know, it was pretty clear by watching the judging that there wasn't a clear winner and uh, and rightfully so because all the top three guys look really good. And one thing I like that they do, especially uh, Steve is noted for this, he gives each guy an opportunity. Now in this case we had three that were kind of the front runners. He gave each guy a, a spot in the center. Uh, a couple poses, and then he flipped it around and put the other guy in the middle. Um, I always like that, though, Peter, because it gives each guy an opportunity. Listen, the, the lighting isn't always even on stage, but everybody wants that, that center light. They want to get on that X. Uh, and he gave the guys uh, an equal opportunity to compete. Yeah, they had every chance because he called them twice. Right at the beginning, the three of them in the right. evening, and then the last call in the evening. So th they really got worked. And th there's no complaints this time that it was rushed and that... Uh, you know, they should have had closer inspection. It was it was done textbook style. Well, Tricky Jackson taking that third place spot, and interestingly, and I think you talk about the upset of the night, wasn't even in the uh, in the placings, but it was in the best poser award, where almost anybody would have would have bet the the horse uh, that it was Tricky Jackson. Of course, nobody more surprised than he day uh, got it, but a great classical routine, Peter, and well deserved. Yeah, and I think the other factor concerned was, and I said this to David at the time, I don't think Tricky's routine was as entertain it snappy as we've seen before you know with all the moves it seemed it, for him it never got started it was still a great routine but you know how i feel about posing you know the classical transitions uh, powerful music powerful physique uh, you know it's great to see Hide get that trophy and another thing i liked about Hide peter was the fact that not only does he hit classical poses but he actually holds the poses and now we've talked about that before a lot of the guys will actually hit uh, traditional poses, but they hit it so fast that, that you don't really see it and, and appreciate the pose for what it is. Hide actually does that, very old school. It's, uh, like I say, well-deserved, well uh, tricky, probably back to the drawing board on that because he's always trying to reinvent, so, you know, you, your heart goes off for him, but he's won his, his fair share of posing awards, so uh, this one going traditional. So that, um, Now, the rest of the uh, 212, David, was good, but I thought those three really stood out from fourth and fifth. Yeah, you know, when they had the, the guys back out at night, it wasn't uh, a five-guy comparison or a six-guy comparison they kept it just those top three so that was a pretty clear indication from the judges that it was a three-person show they weren't flip-flopping fourth and fifth place I thought um, Thomas uh, Mas Benali from Italy Benali from Italy I think he could have been in that mix he's uh, he was a little bit light this morning on color and he's uh, every time I've seen him so far and you know in uh, Dallas and I think uh, one other time he's been light so he's got to work on getting his from northern there. Italy it's yeah, there's yeah. a difference but uh, <laughs> You know, he comes in with great condition, a lot of muscle. I think maybe bring his legs up a little bit more. I could have seen him in that mix uh, with that top three getting compared. But uh, otherwise, I think, you know, the, I don't want to say the talent dropped off too much. Derek Farnsworth looked good. Corey Matthews looked good. Um, Baito, just on size alone, looked good. If Baito is 5% sharper, does he challenge or beat Hide? 
I don't know, 5%? No. If he's razor sharp, if he's as lean as he did, yes, absolutely. You know, to me, Baito's kind of becoming like the, the Lionel Bayeki of the 212 division. Like, he shows up every show, and you're like, well, you, you could have won, but you didn't bring it, so now you're in fifth place. So, I mean, it's almost getting to a point where you, you start losing that wow factor with his physique, and it just turns to frustration because of how incredible he could be if he really did bring it. Well, it seems like he's in the right class. I mean, Vito actually competed in the Open previously. Um, did okay at one show, but it was overseas. Uh, not so well in any of the other ones. So it seemed like a natural for him to go into the 212. But like David said, Peter, he just you want to just ring him out that, like that last little bit. And, and I tell you what, he's got more muscle than pretty much anybody out there. Well, if he was in real rock hard shape, I mean, he, he was doing rolling vacuum poses, but he was still too heavy. If he got rock hard shape, he'd be challenging for the 212 title. You know, it's just oodles of muscle everywhere. I mean, you, you tell me this, you know, why is it this modern day that so many of the guys weren't in condition, you know, throughout the class? I mean, this is a, a novice talking, but if, if you, you don't have good biceps, that's genetic. You cannot, you know, you're never going to get, right. you know, Ronnie Coleman biceps. In some ways, you could say anybody can get into condition if they suffer enough. So why don't they suffer enough? Or is there another... Maybe you don't know the answer. Insufferable bastards. <laughs> yeah. That's the bottom line, Peter. You got to suffer, man. It's, listen, it's old school, but that's the way it goes. And I think sometimes there's just too much juggling going on. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you can juggle three balls, you can actually keep it up pretty good. The minute you throw 10 in there, yeah. you know, you got a whole different world going on here. And then you don't really know when something goes wrong, you don't really know where to look. And I think a lot of times they just get gets a little too advanced, Peter. I think sometimes you got to take a step back, you know, go to simple, you know, the old kiss method. Uh, there's something to be said for that. Well, um, Dorian Yates' anthem was, he used to tell guys two or three days out, they say, what should I do now? What should I do now? I said, nothing. Yeah. Just wait. Good <laughs> advice from the champ on that one. Um, let's talk about Hide at the Olympia now. He's qualified. He's only six weeks out. He's obviously in, in, in fantastic shape for being six weeks out. Um, give me his chances at the Olympia, David. Is he a top six contender, top three, or can he battle for the title? Uh, top six, yes. Top three, uh, if, if Flex Lewis... And David Henry and Eduardo Carrera and Sammy Al Haddad show up. I, I don't see him beating those guys. Top six, uh, I, th I think he can make it inside the top six if he shows up razor sharp. Um, uh, again, top three, I don't think so. And uh, Flex Lewis would have to lose a leg not to win the Olympia. I think as far as uh, you know, as far as Eddie Tata's chances go, he could place very well and very respectable. But he's going to have to be on the money. He does not have any room to show up off. Peter Hide at the Olympia, contender or pretender? So when do they weigh in? Do they weigh in on the Thursday? Uh, they, I think we moved that to on stage uh, at the expo. Uh, so yeah, I think it was Thursday that they weighed in. So it actually gave him a little time to, to beef it up. He's got 48 hours to fill out then. Now that could be to Hide's advantage. I still think struggle for top three, but I see him as a, at his best, a top six guy. All right, well, we'll be keeping tabs on uh, He Day as we get closer to Joe Weider's 50th Olympia. David, of course, that wasn't the only action on stage here tonight. Uh, we had plenty else. Uh, what else you got here? Uh, in women's bodybuilding, uh, Sheila Black got the win tonight. Uh, no surprises from prejudging this morning. They narrowed it down to the top two, her and Jennifer Cidia. Uh I think Sheila actually got better for tonight. Not the biggest girl on stage. All the things you got to consider in bodybuilding, size still has to be one of them. And Monique was so much bigger than everybody else, despite the fact that she wasn't as sharp as Sheila. I would have had her as the winner, but it, it, like we said earlier, it's complete apples and oranges with those two. Um, but Sheila's physique was really impressive. Her legs were great from the front and the back, small waist, really good aesthetics. So uh, I don't think anybody's really going to complain about Sheila walking away with a win. It was a, a very solid showing for her. Yeah, she looked great. I mean, she was in great shape. Uh, she actually won the uh, posing award for the girls. Um, and again, that was well deserved. A, a very nice routine from her. Uh, some floor work in there. So you can see that she's got some uh, gymnastic background in her or, or some dance at least. Um, Mojo. Probably the, obviously the most heralded athlete coming in. She's been a top six Olympian. Um, missed a boat a little here, but is, is David right, Peter? Should she have won this show, or was she just off enough that it made that much of a difference? She actually slipped a third. Yeah, she, she could have won the show. She'd have been really sharp. Going back to Sheila Black, you know, David's quite right. She walked away with it. But apparently she's very good at walking away from things. <laughs> Gotta love it. Uh, Sheila declined an, uh, an interview, and I'm gonna, 
I, it is, I've been, you know, in the year that I've been working for Moscow. Who declines an interview with MD? Uh, she, she, I don't, I, you know, and I, I talked to some of the other folks that know her a little bit better, and, and in, in my understanding is it wasn't as much of an attitude thing as she's a little bit camera shy and gets a little bit nervous being on camera. So uh, all things considered, I, I don't know her enough <laughs> to not give her. I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. So I'm going to give Sheila the benefit of the doubt. It was unique for me having somebody be like, no, I, I, I don't want to do it. Do it so uh, if the guys are you know wondering why there wasn't an interview that's why I would be remiss if I didn't <laughs> uh, talk about Alicia Young uh, the guys on the MD forums are going nuts about Alicia Young since her uh, Alicia had a nice uh, little look uh, posing to some some soft music yeah I uh, you know I could have seen her getting the posing award she came out to some let's get it on and you know for a division that you know we don't want to talk about it too much but you know it's known for this lack of femininity and stuff and for as muscular as she is she's still a really beautiful girl and she came out posed to a, a, a you know I don't know can I say sexy <laughs> you know sex. that, sure. she she moved really well and I think uh, it's you know we can put up some clips we can't get the full routine but I think uh, I think this is one where the guys who are big fans might want to go out and buy some DVDs of her, of her posing. Well, David I'm thinking Sheila just declined because she doesn't like you but um Peter, I got to ask you now, aren't you kind of in the wrong field if you're a little camera shy? I mean, you're in the bodybuilding world of getting on stage in a in a, a slingshot of a bikini on stage. Yeah, watched by thousands of people. But as, but, you know, if, if what David, you know, I'll take it as red and we'll give it a pass. I, I, I used to be camera shy, you know, but <laughs> now I'm a ham. But uh, so, yeah, we'll give her a pass on that. Maybe the next time we can catch her. All right, well, I'll, I'll teach you how to get the big interview, David. It's uh, no problem, buddy. But All right, what else you got? We had plenty of other reaction. We had fitness and men's physique also. Uh, fitness, Bethany, Sister Nino, again, no surprise. She came out in the morning in the actual two-piece physique round, walked away with that. Uh, her routine, which uh, is surprising. I didn't know at the Arnold earlier on this year. She was in first place after the physique round, lost a few points for the routine. She came out tonight, did a really cool routine. She had this, like, naughty school teacher outfit on so i don't want to get too much into that hot for you man you're all pent up man would you have some red bull there in between while well, you're watching the show what's going on opposed to some van halen uh you know so for an 80s guy that was awesome so well does win nice to see uh darian tissenbaum ended up getting in second place we saw her uh you know in the top three so we knew she was there but runner up a strong finish for darian after uh disappointing uh having to pull out at chicago um and then into the men's physique uh sadiq hadzovic uh second place in new york um brought it all together today really tight race with Anton Antipov, but walked away as a winner and got his Olympia qualification. All right, well, some great competition here, Peter. It continues tomorrow. Of course, we got plenty of NPC action along with the pros. Tomorrow, figure, bikini, women's physique, and the men's open, and there is a lot on the line tomorrow in that men's open, Peter. Absolutely. You know, we, we all want to see what Victor Martinez is going to look like. By all accounts, he is looking good. Um, it'll be a, a good competition all around. I hope to see quality and depth tomorrow that maybe we didn't see today. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for the uh, post-game report. Stay tuned, everybody, right here at MD. Of course, we've got all the action tomorrow, a full day, pre-judging in the morning, 12 noon. We'll, of course, have uh, updates along with a little pre-game that we'll do and pick our winners, see if David can pick one, two, and three in a row. Of course, Peter, never wrong. Uh, and then, of course, we'll be moving on throughout the day, the finals tomorrow night. So stay tuned, folks. We'll have our post-game report immediately following the show. We'll see who makes it to Joe Eater's 50th Olympia.